YouTube Oz it going the goat outs is back with brand new trade candidates to keep an eye on as we approach the NFL season some of these could surprise some people let's start with the guy on your screen right now Jahan Dotson's one that's getting a lot of buzz recently I guess apparently a battle for that next receiver spot after Terry McLaurin you think you would think it has to be Dotson but it doesn't sound like it at the moment there are even some people around the league that are saying could he be a shocking cut candidate I don't see that that would be mind-blowing to me uh, if they decide for some reason they don't want him there is definitely some trade value on Dotson so that is one to watch here uh, you know just a couple years in out of Penn State really good separator really solid speed there's a lot of teams looking for a receiver uh, teams that were in on Brandon Ayuk Patriots Browns you know the Steelers aren't able to land him if the 49ers do trade him I'd actually watch out for the 49ers to try to try to add a receiver maybe like a Dotson uh the Saints make a lot of sense they're always looking for speedy receivers he was somewhat comparable to Chris Olave in the same draft class interesting I would love the Chargers for Dotson I, he would help them obviously but not only that I maybe he would be their receiver one right away just a really good deep speedy deep threat for Justin Herbert um, so a number of teams that definitely would like to have him, that would definitely trade some value for him. You know, and they'd be throwing a fourth round pick, you know, um, you know, at, at them. Maybe third's a little rich, but I, that still wouldn't be bad. I think a fourth round pick would be a would. I, but I, to me, the Commanders could use him if he, for some reason, doesn't doesn't win that receiver two job. Like you, st I feel like they still are in need of a guy like that, you know, next in line. So I don't know. Uh, maybe a, there's a lot of teams that would be interested, but maybe you have a deeper team if Jordan Addison gets suspended to the Vikings, and that'd be a pretty good trio uh, for them. But maybe their priorities are elsewhere. But this is a very appealing to all of us, to teams as well, a very appealing trade can potential trade candidate. I've been hearing his name pop up more and more, so very interesting. Another young, speedy receiver, definitely not as good as Jahan Dotson, but the Patriots uh, rotation receiver Tyquan Thornton out of Baylor a couple years ago has been a little underwhelming, has had an injury pop up, uh, but the Patriots, they have a bunch of these guys. They have a bunch of... He's not a receiver two, but they have a bunch of receiver twos. They have a bunch of threes and fours where, where he falls in line, and he's a little bit down the depth chart right now. They, they don't need any more of those guys. They probably need to get rid of some of those guys while adding legit number ones. We saw them interested in Brandon Ayuk. So I, I don't think they're like too connected to Thornton, too attached, I should say, to Thornton, um, where, where they wouldn't trade him for, for little value. I, I think they maybe would trade him for – Small amount of value. Like, could could somebody get him for like a six round pick? I mean, pretty good. Guy with upside speed. A lot of teams looking for that rotation type of guy. The Saints again. Look, they're looking for another guy like that. I I would imagine. Could the Chargers? We talked about them. The Browns. Uh, I would think. Just teams. You know, looking for you know maybe you know guys that may not even play for them, but they would they would take a swing on them, like the Rams, like the Lions, you know, teams like that. Uh, the Cardinals, you know, there's there's a list of teams, especially if the value's there. I don't know if anyone would would trade a fifth with the Patriots part with them for a sixth. I think it's a possibility. Could he even be traded for a seventh? Possibility that that would be a really good value deal, but he hasn't really proven anything yet. He's long, he's athletic, he's a deep threat. You, you like that. You like the upside there. You like a, a guy to work with like that. So another one that again, it's a smaller name but kind of appealing like if you get if your team gets him, it's like, "All right, we might have an upside rotation guy here. That'd be pretty fun." How about an offensive lineman? Uh, I got another charger on this video and we talked about the Chargers being a landing spot for some of those receivers, but Trey Pipkins who was a starting right tackle for them. Uh, has that experience. He wasn't great, wasn't awful, but they replaced him with Joe Alt, and they do have Rashawn Slater, remember? So uh, they have starters in there. Now, it is very important to have pretty solid, like premium depth at that premium position. So maybe they're not willing to move on from him unless the price is right. But there are teams desperate, desperate for tackles every year at this time of the year. Um, so I could see a team trading like a fourth round pick for him, which seems like a little bit more than his value just because they're desperate and it's a guy with starting experience, which I guess is rare to come across. Uh, maybe more injuries occur, hopefully not. Um, but I look at, uh, you know, a team like the Ravens actually, you know, maybe a Harbaugh brother trade here. They could use another tackle. Uh, but man, there's a, there's a number of teams that could, that could use a starting tackle and we'll see if even more probably will, will pop up over uh you know the next the next couple weeks but uh, uh 
the Dolphins could use offensive linemen. There's, there's a number of teams out there, but this is one that I think every time – at this time, every single year, there's teams calling like, hey, is this guy available? And it's like, no, no, it's just really rare to see starting experience tackles that could be available because, again, he's no longer in line to be a starter. So that's an interesting one to watch out for as well. Um, a lot of these are names that really aren't being brought up much, but I think they probably will be. Uh, I, I heard a little bit of buzz about Dotson, though, recently. Uh, sticking with the Chargers, Joey Bosa. This would surprise a lot of people. A few months ago, it wouldn't have surprised a lot of people because the Chargers were trying to shop him. Uh, they, they were trying to clear cap. They end up trading Keenan Allen. They cut Mike Williams, so that was the solution. And they kept Bosa, and they kept Mack. Uh, so... Why this is a little bit of a surprise now is because people think, well, it's done with. They, they they made decisions on who they're keeping, who they're not. So they're going to keep Bosa. And it, again, it's, a, it's on a surprise candidates video for a reason, but I'd say not so fast with him. Like, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't say 0% chance he gets straight. It's definitely a possibility. They still have Khalil Mack. They have Tuli Tui Pelotu, uh, who they like a lot. He played very well last year. So they could afford to move on from Bosa, and there are teams out there that can definitely use him. If if he was to be dealt, I'm looking at a team like the Chicago Bears. They they are looking for not just a pass rusher, a pretty good pass rusher, uh, because it's a pretty good football team now. The roster's really coming together. That's really what they need, opposite of Montez Sweat. Uh, they were really involved in Matthew Judon, which the question was, does he fit Eberflus' scheme? You know, I guess they're tweaking a little bit where – uh, you know they're they're willing to he's willing to have some stand up rushers, but both I think would actually fit even more. But they were next in line after the Falcons for trading for Judon. They were really involved there, but the Falcons you know trade a pretty good pick in, in the third round pick there. So if Bosa becomes available, uh, I think a team like the Bears um, you know could could a rival like the Lions be involved? I know the Cardinals looking for pass rushers is that one a great fit? I guess you could debate that. Um, there's other teams looking for pass rushers, but a guy like this, yeah, I would really watch out for a team like Chicago. Uh, what do you trade, though? Because it's such a big-time player where the Chargers maybe need a pretty good pick, like a second round, maybe a third. and Maybe they wouldn't even accept the third. Uh, but teams that are trading for him probably don't want to trade that high of a pick because, you know, what do we do with the contract now and in the future and the, mainly the durability concerns. Really good when he's on the field. Maybe a little underwhelming, though, even though still really good. Uh, but just uh, something's always popping up with him. So it hasn't quite lived up to the hype, even though he's shown flashes of it. But an interesting one, again, because people kind of got quiet on it because they made their decisions uh, – you know, but they didn't make they didn't make they didn't need to make all those decisions at that time at the at the cap clearing time of, of uh, around free agency. So maybe it, they want to roll with Mac and and Tui Pelo too. So they they move on from Bosa. We will see. Uh, another pass rusher. Haven't heard anything on this. I just kind of just thought of it. A young pass rusher that's very solid, but also has durability concerns. Aziz Ajilari from the Giants. And why I bring him up is well, it is a new defensive staff in there for New York. Um, so they're not really fully tied to him. And they brought in Brian Burns. They put a ton of value into getting him, whether with the, with, with the draft picks, the compensation, and paying him. And they have Kayvon Thibodeau, who they like, and it's an up-and-comer here, of course. Um, so that's their duo, and it's very important to have a rotation. It's very important to have other good players uh, at, at a premium position, so they very well could keep Ajilari. But he's a guy that has starter potential, starter talent if he stays healthy, and he's uh, you know on the bench. So could a team – I think it would have to be the right price for the Giants. They would rather – they would probably rather keep him as a high end rotational guy. Maybe that's his role. That's like that that perfect role for him. Um, you know, if it, unless the price is right, I think if you're talking a fourth round pick, they probably would think about it. I don't think they're going to get a third for him. Fourth round pick, they could either be like, yeah, we we might kind of like that, or pass. We'd rather keep him as rotation. Anything less, like a fifth round pick, which maybe teams are offering, and then the Giants would pass and keep him as a premium uh, rotational edge rusher. But young pass rusher with some upside. We talked about some teams that could that could use that pass rusher. Um, we mentioned the Bears are really looking at it. The Titans should be looking because Arden Key is suspended. I think it's a good fit. Who I really like for Ajilari is uh, the Cardinals, who have his brother, BJ Ajilari, on, and I was really looking forward to watching him this year. He has more upside than his brother, a second-year player from LSU, but 
injured out for the year just very unfortunate but they could bring the brother in here and they badly can use a pass rusher they were sniffing around on Matthew Judon as well uh this one make a little more sense because looking for young guys but that would be fun I like that one a lot I feel like a really good fit so could the Cardinals it just what do they trade uh will they be willing to trade a four it's maybe maybe not they would be willing to trade a five probably the Giants probably wouldn't accept that if they did there's some sort of a chance there. So I guess that's what's stopping that one is like, would the Giants rather just keep him or would they trade them? It'd probably take the right price there. But man, if he stayed healthy, he'd probably be known as a lot better than what he is right now because he, he, has, he has that talent. Another pass rusher, similar to Joey Bosa, not really in terms of play style, um, but he was talked about as a legit, Josh Sweat, that is from the Eagles, was talked about as a legit trade candidate months ago. And that kind of went away. And like we talked about, Joey Bosa, team, the Chargers made the decisions on who to cut, who to keep. And people think, well, it's done with. They're not trading them. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's completely closed. And then with the Eagles, it was they were trying to shop Sweat and Hassan Reddick at the same time. And because they traded Reddick, people go, well, they're done. They're going to keep Sweat. And that very well could be true. They definitely could use Sweat. He's a very solid, underrated pass rusher. A little underwhelming last year. But they were trying to shop Reddick and Sweat at the same time, and they couldn't reach a deal. And it kind of felt like because they had young pass rushers in there, they signed Bryce Huff. Uh, you know, remember they have Nolan Smith, Jalex Hunt's a guy they drafted. They really liked the depth that they got, guys that actually could become starters. Uh, in but to fit their new defense, Vic Fangio's defense, a little bit more, they kind of viewed Reddick and Sweat as more of that Gannon defensive fit, where different type of pass rushers like Huff and Nolan Smith and Jalex Hunt. Like these are, these are speedy, you know, more athletic pass rushers that can stand up and rush. Not that sweat really can't do it, but he's more of a physical guy. So I, I think it's still a possibility just because they trade a Redick. I mean, they could want to keep sweat, but just because they trade him doesn't mean they do not want to trade sweat. And they didn't get really the right offer uh, on a sweat trade, even though there was talks it felt like before Reddick was traded, it felt like there was more talks around sweat, but they just weren't really getting the right offer. But now as time passes, training camp, preseason goes through, teams realize, hey, we need a pass rusher more than we thought. And sweat had some durability concerns at Florida State and right when he came in the league. Um, so maybe teams were kind of waiting to see if he made it through training camp, but teams realize they have more of that need or teams lose a guy because of injury. We just talked about BJ Ajilari. Uh, and why why the Cardinals could use one, and they were looking, they were sniffing around on Matthew Judon. Sweat actually played under their head coach and their defensive coach, Jonathan Gannon. Um, so that again could be a team. The Bears again pop up um, with the guy like Josh Sweat. I think a really good fit. Eberflus's defense. So um, between Bosa and Sweat, maybe those teams did make their decisions and moved on from other guys, and they're ready to keep those guys. Or maybe one or both are still willing for the right price. That's the tricky part as well. Maybe it would take. Uh, a third or a fourth round pick. I don't think a team would trade a third, fourth, and then would the Eagles accept a fourth? That That is the big question. Uh, then one more. This one's been popping up a little bit. Kenny Pickett, the Eagles' new uh, backup quarterback who they traded for. So it would kind of, it was a weird deal though with the swaps, but it would kind of need to match up where they do not lose value. They don't want to trade, they don't want to make it a, a loss before the year even started, before the offseason ended, and, and how that trade ended up working out. But, um, Tanner McGee looked pretty good, and they played him a lot in that last preseason game. So do they absolutely need Pickett? Maybe not, but I guess what hurts play style, you know, could could they value the – makes sense. A value, a, a, a experienced backup, and maybe McKee they feel is not ready yet. So they may, may just rather keep Pickett and just have a pretty solid backup with starting experience. But his name's popped up a little bit, again, because teams are – every day. Every day, another team, not every single day, but almost it feels like that, another team needs a quarterback. And, um, you know, and, and we'll see when it comes down to the season, a team just you know, trades for picket, a team that needs a backup even, that could be a starter or maybe needs a starter more uh, than the Eagles do. And the Vikings are being brought up because McCarthy's out for the season. Uh, Darnold's going to be their guy. Uh, you know, so you could say Darnold's going to be their guy. He was probably going to be their guy anyways. They do have Nick Mullins. I don't, I don't think Jaron Hall is going to be, the, be a, a, the guy to be the second string. But Nick Mullins, when he played last year, he kind of let them. He threw for a lot of yards, but kind of let them down, the Vikings, that is. But they don't want to have that same situation as last year where it's like they're going from, well, obviously Kirk gets hurt, but they're going um, 
you know, Dobbs, Mullins, and you know, they're switching you know, Hall. They're switching guys like crazy. And, and they don't want to have that again. Like, so they don't want to be Darnold to Mullins. You know, they don't, they don't want to have that probably. So they could look around. We talked about in a recent video uh, that uh, Tyler Huntley was one to watch. I don't see the fit with Minnesota, but Taylor Heineke, maybe one to watch. Uh, could Davis Mills be? I think the Texans would rather just keep him. So I thought about him in this video, but I can see if the Eagles can flip it for a nice profit, you know, based on that recent, you know, this offseason trade with Pickett. Uh, but another team like the Chargers looking for a decent backup. Uh, could, could the Ravens look for a decent backup since they don't have Huntley? I talked about, could they trade, you know, for him again? Um, yeah, the Vikings are a team that kind of stands out, but we'll see the Eagles very well, uh, could be interested, just, just wanting to keep him, I should say, uh, as a high end backup. But so these are, we have a recent video just like this with over 20 players and a couple of guys. I mean, Matthew Dujan already got traded off that video. Uh, so check that one out. I wanted to add some more based on recent things I'm hearing or just recent thoughts that I'm hearing. And these are more kind of the surprise candidates. Uh, so let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. If you want to add, like, l- let me know players that should be added to this list. You know, if I make another scenarios video, which guys I should talk about. But check out that recent video with all the trade candidates. We have a recent trade scenarios video as well. You can check that out. ton of content on the channel. Our in-season content is the best in the planet. I cannot wait for what we have planned, uh, and it's right around the corner. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. That'll do it. Goodbye.